Anyone who's read the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke knows that there is a vast amount of material in which they overlap. Slightly different in each of them, but, the, but there's a whole vast amount of evidence they have in common. And in fact, while scholars today like to think of this as something that was only discovered in the last two centuries, if you look at the beginnings of a Greek New Testament, you will see that Eusebius of Caesarea knew this as well, because he drew up a special table at the beginning uh, of, to be placed at the beginning of copies of the four Gospels, where he listed all the common material between Matthew and Luke. And it's still printed in front of Nestle Alland. To talk to us about this, we have Sarah Parks. Sarah, why is Q important? Well, first of all, what is Q? Okay, what is Q? <laughs> Q is a nickname for a collection of Jesus sayings, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, we better, we better say why it's called Q. Yeah, it's a nickname that stands for Quella, which simply means source. Yeah. So it's the source of the quotations of Jesus used by Luke and Matthew. And so Q was at first sort of an abstract kind of mathematical solution to what we call the synoptic problem, which simply means the question of exactly how Mark's gospel, Matthew's gospel, and Luke's gospel are literarily related. This was a puzzle that was solved by the, the hypothesis that Mark came first and provided the kind of biography of Jesus that those two later gospels used. Uh, and something else provided the word for word quotations of Jesus that those two gospels use and they call that source Q, which is just the, the source of Jesus sayings. Mm -hmm. But now your second, your question of why is studying Q important? To me, answering the synoptic puzzle is just one part of why Q is important. What's really more, much more interesting to me about Q and what scholars have done with Q in the last hundred years is to ask about the people behind it. Okay. And what can it, what can, if we look at the sayings of Jesus outside of their gospel context, taking away the trimmings, mm -hmm. taking away the, the kind of geographical locations that Luke and Matthew plug the quotes into, and then the explanations that they give, what, what do we get if we look at what they were using as a source? And so is there consensus on the answer to that question? No. But we're in the process of speculating about what kind of people would collect down Jesus' sayings and translate them into Greek. Because Matthew and Luke are using a Greek source, it's obvious because their writing styles are different, mm -hmm. but yet they have the, these quotations largely in the same order, but also sometimes word for word, which is, mm. which is just not likely if they were using an Aramaic source or if they were using oral tradition. So, so what are some of the answers for who these people might have been? Well, what people notice about Q is that it's not really a biography genre like Mark invented when he wrote his gospel. It's, it's about people who are interested in Jesus as a teacher. And it's, it's also very fascinating to examine whether there are differences in what the sayings mean if you look at them on your own, on their own, as opposed to the meanings that the gospel writers are, are wishing to, to mold them into. And the answer is that there, there are some differences. Yeah. Well, we can see even just reading the same saying in Matthew and Luke, you yeah. can see how there's very different slants are placed on the same saying. Yeah. So what you're saying is, let's take the saying and let's try and imagine a, a scenario before Matthew and Luke and, and just look at the saying in conjunction with a few of the other sayings. Yeah, that's it. Okay, give me, give me, give me, give me a few insights into this. Okay. Um, well, for example, I, I heard a talk by Elizabeth Schusler Fiorenza and she was talking about parables. Okay. And she was talking about the parable of the, we call it the persistent neighbor 
or The Persistent Widow, these twin stories, mm-hmm. where in the, say, the saying on its own, the parable on its own, you have these people who have a problem and they, they bang on the door, or the woman is banging on the judge's door, the neighbor is banging on the friend's door, they need a problem solved. One of them needs food, one of them needs justice. And in the parable, the judge is not a nice character. And he says, go away, I don't care, I'm ignoring you. The friend is saying, go away, I'm already in bed, forget it, I don't care about you, neighbor. But because of their persistence, the wicked judge and the the neighbor who doesn't care finally get fed up and they help the widow, they help the neighbor. That's it, that's Hmm. the parable. But the way that those are embedded in Luke, Luke has, uh, uh, he brackets it and makes it about prayer. But what Schusler Fiorenza pointed out is, if you make those parables about prayer, God is the the wicked judge and the neighbor who doesn't care. That's not the picture of God that Jesus usually teaches about. Hmm. And so what's going on there? Well, I think what's going on is that Luke is trying to make early Jesus followers look prim and proper to a Roman audience. Luke is trying to clean up this movement. Nothing to see here. You know, the the temple's just been destroyed. There's been a revolt. Luke is distancing his movement from rebel rousers. And so he does not want a Jesus who's saying, go persist. He wants a Jesus who's saying, pray, and God will take care Mm. of it. So that's just one example of how looking at the sayings on their own can reveal quite a different meaning. So Q is important, not just because it's a way of solving the literary relationships between three texts, the synoptic problem, but because it allows us to understand part of the period between the time of Jesus and the time of our Gospels, a time when these were collected, valued, then translated, then disseminated, and then finally, it allows us to have a, thinking of it as a distinct source, Q, allows us to understand what's actually going on in the way Matthew and Luke uses it. Yeah, that's right. Sarah, thank you very much for this lovely introduction to Q. Oh, my pleasure. 